What is up? It's your boy Johnny Shreve. I have BB promos and tell like it is. Welcome back to another episode of Coaching Up. Today we're coaching up Chris Bumstead. Yes, that's it. The sexiest lisp in the business. Anyway, we're gonna coach up his video anabolic post workout meal slash big fat shoulders. Anyway guys, so I'm gonna use this video to give you guys some tips and cues because I see some very similar mistakes with my athletes that are continuously being done over and over and over again. So I'm gonna drill these things in your head to give you guys a better overall understanding of how to do some of these workouts, how to set up you know, your approach to actually setting up and going through the actual movements, and a bunch of other cues that are gonna help you have a better overall muscle-mind connection with your shoulders. Anyway, let's get this started. Come over here. He's doing obviously like a warm up set here with shoulder press. He's doing some quarter folds, I call it. Anyway, guys, so a lot of you guys, I've seen a couple, you know, comments about like, uh, this guy is a bodybuilder and he's bigger. I'm gonna go, the guy's bigger, whatever. It's fine. Listen, it doesn't matter how big you are or what credentials you have, whatever you wanna look at it. I'm trying to give you guys some cues to understand these things, right? Chris Bumstead is an Olympian who's genetically gifted. So what he does, he can basically do. For you guys out there, I'm trying to give you guys the best possible way to do these things to try to look as good as him, which is never gonna happen. You only look as good as what you can look like and what your genetics can actually provide for you, along with some good work ethic. So, when we're setting up dumbbells, we're gonna look at a couple things here of how he's, you know, where lean is. This, if you look by this, he's gonna get a lot of anterior delts in here. There's a little more of an incline of his bench, number one. He's scoot up a little further onto the bench of the seat and overall. So we're gonna teach you guys a couple things. Even with Chris, and like you said, do what he wants, he can do what he wants to do, it's fine. But for you guys, we wanna approach this where we, like, again, what we're looking at were in terms of like doing dumbbell press, right? Dumbbell press, it should be hitting a little more of our lateral head of our delts. When you have like a barbell or a machine and the weights in front of you, or say overhead press, you're gonna start off getting a lot more of that interior delt as well too. Regardless. Now, when we're actually setting up our bench, if our bench is, keeps kind of inclining, we're gonna go from basically our lateral head all the way to the front of our head of our delts. And we really wanna work the entire thing in terms of the, having your best range of motion and angles to do so. But this is primarily when we're doing dumbbells, it should be a lot more of a lateral and anterior delt movement, right? So when we're doing this, setting yourself up in the bench, make sure we're sitting down, like I'm gonna do this without weight. We need to be butt in the back of the bench, feet planted on the floor, right? I'm gonna be pushing from here. So if I kind of did this, I'd be able to push myself up the bench, right? That's how I kind of want to be, right? I don't want my feet out this way or too far underneath. I need them to be underneath me in a way where if I'm pressing from the ground, it's gonna press me back and up, right? So when I'm actually doing the movement and when I say from floor to core, pushing from here to your glutes and to your core, that kind of kinetic energy in a sense coming from the floor is gonna finish up here, right? So we're doing this, not hopping off the bench, but that's where your leverage and civilization should start. When we're sitting down, a couple things we need to do is engage our core. We don't wanna be like this, because the more arch in our back we have, the more we're gonna take that angle that used to be here and here, and it's gonna start to creep up just here, right? So the more we're angled this way, even with, and say the bench is inclined more, you're gonna have a lot more of a very high incline, you know, chest movement. So it'll be a lot more chest and anterior delt, more so than anterior delt and lateral head, right? So. What we wanna do is, a couple things, I've done this a bunch of times. I've given you guys this cue a ton of times. Weight's here, we're set up. From here, we're kicking each dumbbell up first. Kicking it up, kicking it up, right? We're gonna leave them here, almost like we're doing like a goblet squad or whatever, just sitting here. And we're gonna get ourselves situated even more on the bench. From here, floor to core. Your core is gonna be tight, so you're pushing your butt almost back and your back's gonna flatten out a little bit more when you're pressing. Not like this, if I engage my core, then I get really flush with the bench. Now from here, I don't want my elbows flared out this way. I want them to stay a little bit angled this way, right? That's gonna give us a little bit of help from the anterior delt, right? The more we do this, the more it's gonna hurt my, my back, to be honest. So a tiny bit of a angle from here, and then we're pressing this thing up and over overhead, right? As if we had a bench or as if we had a bar, and the bar overhead press finishing here, and the good thing about dumbbells is, is I can keep that to the side the entire time, right? Up. Now he's doing quarter full, so he's going from here, doing a quarter rep, down, and all the way up, which is fine. But for you guys to do it, remember, we're not just, we're not bouncing it up and coming up. We're literally pulling it down, pushing it up, pulling it down, 
pushing it up. Now you see where he's doing this. He's not fully locking his arms out. There's no need. But I know you guys are gonna see that and emulate it and you're gonna get a rep that looks like this, right? What I want you to do is, the reason why you don't have to lock out is because you're basically resting at this point. Now I'm not saying stop here. I'm saying stop at a point where you're just, just shy of having full extension, right? From here to here, my delts are still working really hard. From here, they're kind of stuck there and then my triceps are doing most of the work, kind of stabilizing and holding it here. So we're doing this again. Flip that up. Sit yourself to the back, from floor to core, chest up from here and then pushing up and down and then pushing only there. I'm not locked out of the way. This is locked out, this isn't. And that keeps attention on my delts the entire time. And just from that little bit of work, I can feel my delts fired off and I don't feel any of my chest at all. So if you're doing an overhead press, dumbbell shoulders or whatever it is, you should feel the majority of it in your anterior and your lateral head, not in your chest. Your chest should be fresh. Leave chest for chest day. That's not ASMR. This is. Hey, guess what guys? Also, I will be headed to the American Fitness Expo in Houston, Texas. So if you guys are going, make sure you guys show up. I'll be there with my film crew. I've been doing some great collaborations with some guys down there. Guys you know, from Thin James, some others. So if you guys see me at the expo, make sure you guys come by, say what's up, get a picture, show some love and maybe Give some tips. Anyway guys, see you at the American Fitness Expo July 23rd and 24th. Be there, be there, I'm gonna be there, so be there. Peace. Okay, again, right? So from, from this you can see, just the way that his body's moving, you can see his chest is working a lot here. He's on a little bit of an incline. If you're trying to target your shoulders, make sure your bench is up closest to 90 degrees. You're not leaning back too much, right? Your butt's in the back of the bench, just that alone. Your butt in the back of your bench and you're gonna have more of this being shoulder targeted than being like more of a, you know, minor, pec minor um, exercise. Let's go to the next one we have here. Okay, here we go. So we're just looking at basically your pathway, your elbow pathway, and I would say stacking the jo joints, quote unquote. I'm gonna bring you guys through a couple things what I see when it comes to any kind of machine work, mistakes that are made that we can avoid. Now it's a great set. A couple things to kind of make a point of what he said about, you know, logging his, you know, his training and making sure he gets stronger. People are getting this mixed up. If you try myofibular strength, that is a way of getting stronger. That's how you get stronger. That's how you program. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy will give you more volume and build bigger muscles, but they both are going to have a form of progressive overload. For you to progress in both, you're gonna have to, you know, adjust something in for the easiest terms, the weight. So you're, you'll still get strong training sacroplasmic hypertrophy, hypertrophy period, whatever. You're going to get stronger in a linear way because in order to get, you know, in order to maximize the overall load or the um, efficiency and the difficulty of the set, we have to, at some point, add more weight. And when you add more weight, you're getting stronger. So don't think if you're training sacroplasmic hypertrophy, you're not gonna get strong, you will. Now, do you have to get stronger to get a better looking physique? No, you don't. You don't have to target strength to build muscle, right? It's not that necessary. If you want to, go right ahead. I'm just telling you, you can literally just continue to train as you train, training sacrifice hypertrophy, and just really focusing on volume and tax your muscles that way instead of always thinking about the load and getting stronger, then all of a sudden, oh man, I got hurt because I tried to do a, a five rep something or other, right? Anyway, let's go over to the machine. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things. I find that even on the machine or Smith machine, Machine, any machine, we need to keep these cues in head when we approach these movements. Okay, so when we're looking at this like machine work, we're gonna have the same fundamentals when it comes to dumbbells as well too, when it comes to from floor to core. So you're gonna be, you're gonna approach it the same way, getting your feet that are somewhat underneath you where you can literally be active and stand up, right? If they're out here and you're kind of doing this kind of stuff, you know, just get into a place where you're, you know, almost like, not necessarily in a squat position, but you just know that you have your feet in a place where they're actually gonna help you with this lift. Then from floor to core, obviously. Now, from a stack to joint, standpoint. So for you guys who are new or just don't remember or if I haven't said this in a while and I'm pretty sure I have. Stacking the joints basically means we want to make sure the elbow stays underneath the pathway of whatever machine you're on. So if you look at this machine here, this isn't going to go straight up. It's going to go backwards, right? You can see the angle when I push it, 
it ends up going this way. Remember, what I see this happen all the time is the bar, you know, this is intended to go this way. And whether you're on the bench and stair, has, everything is in a line. We're from the floor to core, heads back, we're here. And then I see either too much of this or we're pressing here and it's very off that I see this and see you like you see my elbows are moving against the, the way of this of the pathway of the machine or I'll see too much of this where we're kind of doing this and you can see as well too. Same thing if I grab inside this grip as well too, we're kind of like this and elbows are outside or they're too much in the middle. What we want to do is, is we have to have some form of, you know, internal or external rotation to get ourselves under the bar. So when I'm here and I know that this thing is going to go this direction, we're looking at stacking the joints basically means like, here's my, my arm, my hand, and my elbow is going to be internally, externally rotate a slight bit. So when I push right from my elbow, when I'm pressing up, it stays the same pathway of the machine and follows it down. So I'm pressing up and controlling it down, right? The same thing if I was going to do inside here, I would want myself to be here and then my elbows following underneath the actual bar when we're pressing. So you're going to have to watch yourself a bit to kind of give yourself a point of reference on how it feels and how it looks. That's why we use the mirror, not for vanity reasons, maybe, maybe a little bit, but whatever. Just make sure that we're using it to see how it feels. So then after we don't really need to use a mirror at all, right? So it'd be the same thing if I was like on the sit machine. A lot of times we have to kind of like feel out where the, where we want to sit, right? Because this thing's not going to be exactly where we want it to be in terms of where the bench is. And depending on the sit machine you have, it could be on an angle, whatever, right? So I'm going to basically get myself pushed back a bit and kind of feel out where it's going to be. And I know like, oh yeah, this is going to work, right? So cheat myself back a little bit more. And then when I'm here, I'm going to budget seat up. And from here, okay, I'm, I'm still kind of too far in front, right? It's hard. If I have to get my elbows underneath, I got to get it really, really underneath. That way I'm going to, I'm going to externally rotate way too much. So I'm just going to kind of play around with it. You have to feel it out. And from here, and all right, that's not bad. It's pretty good right here. Now it comes to stacking the joints, the same thing. From here, unracking the weight. When I come down, if you just look at my elbows, right? I'm still too far, literally. There you go. That's good enough for me. There, now I know that from here, right? From floor to core, heads back. My elbows are underneath, whether I'm like gripping like this or like this, my elbows are falling underneath when I press this thing up. My elbows are underneath as much as I can, right? Now, if I want to really make this an overhead, I can get myself here and push and do this, which I kind of like doing a lot when it comes to this machine. But for those of you who are staying in the machine where your bench is going to stay where it is and keep your head back, we want to keep our elbows underneath the weight the entire time. Now this is going to target your anterior delt and your chest no matter what because of where the bar is and where the bar pathway is going. It remains in the front. Not much is going to be happening on the side. So if you're looking for this to actually work to the side of your delt, it's not, right? So from here, coming down and elbows underneath, right? We don't want to be here because I see this happen all the time. I see this way too much, right? Or the bench is way too far back and we're kind of doing this, right? This happens a lot. Again, adjust the bar enough, adjust the bench enough that when you come down, your elbows can stay underneath the weight and pushing up and that load stays underneath, right? We want to push from the elbow up. It should be underneath this weight as much as we possibly can when we're pressing. Pressing with our shoulders depressed. So don't press and come all the way up. We don't need that. Keep your shoulders down. And you see, I'm, you, it looks like I'm locked out. I'm not locked out. This is locked out. This is where I am here. My delts are firing off right now. The load's still on it. Right now it's not. Right now it is. From here, pressing up and squeezing it up and pushing while push myself into the floor. Take that same cue when you're doing any kind of pressing movement. If you're doing a bench press, shoulder press, think of pushing yourself to the floor or into the bench or into the ground, not thinking just lifting it off of your chest or up in the air, right? Raise the roof kind of thing. So you see just like a lot of his chest is raising up. Now this is something he's doing his own technique and whatever else, but again, for you guys, you really wanna emphasize working that delt right? Push yourself into the ground, right? You can tell how much his chest is actually aiding that lift. Now look at, actually, if we want to look at the girl on the side, this is actually pretty cool. I want you guys to check out this girl over here, right? Her pathway, right? You can see her elbows, right? This thing is going this direction and her arms are behind. So when she pushes, her elbows are going to stay behind that the entire time, right? 
So she needs to be a little more internally, externally rotated a bit to get there. Now there's no problem at all trying to fix yourself in the bench to give yourself a better overall um, positioning. Remember, all machines aren't made for everybody, right? Machines are made for the general physique right standard size or whatever you might have to scoot yourself you know back a little more or up a bit to really you know get into a machine depending on where it is but the main thing is, is you want to make sure we stack the joints make sure your elbows are following the same pathway of the machine that is it guys hope you guys enjoyed that video if you did make sure you guys like subscribe and share you know what come with the tug it is transparent vulnerable truth and for coaching johnachieve.com if you guys are interested in coaching book yourself a 15 to 30 minute consult at the end of the consult i deduct it off any package that you pick also guys see the description below for those discount codes and promo codes out save a life or change your life for the better and guys i'm on instagram and tiktok guys send me your progress pics your training pics and your video clips and i'll repost it for you because you know how it is iron sharp is iron progressive overload your life in the meantime keep dream chasing peace